Hello everyone, welcome to Gasoline Alley. This uh, video is going to be our 100th video for uh, YouTube. So we had a few questions asked us on, uh, on our channel, uh, like what, what is Gasoline Alley? Um, what's in Gasoline Alley? Could we have a closer look at Gasoline Alley? How did it start? I get all those questions. So basically, Gasoline Alley started back in uh, 99. And I was sitting in the shop one night after working all day. And a friend of mine gave me a little tiny miniature gas pump. And I was looking up at it and I was thinking, gee, you know what? I'd like to do a gas pump sometime, restore one. So I couldn't find one at the time, so I built one out of uh, two one quarter inch sheets of uh, aluminum. I TIG welded everything and I made a cabinet out of it. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you uh, a close up of a few different items, some of the bigger items, some of the custom items, and then I'm going to show you how things transpired at Gasoline Alley. Uh, my interest changed from time to time. Uh, one week I could be doing a pedal car. A week later, I could be starting a restoration of a vintage motorcycle. Uh, a month later, it could be a one-arm bandit slot machine, uh, a pinball machine, games arcade of, of any type. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a very big variety of what we do here. And when I say we, it's only the two of us. It's my wife and I. My wife does all the research and the graphics. And uh, I do all the grunt work. I do the painting, the fabricating, the designing, the welding, body work, whatever it takes to get it done. And uh, there's nothing rushed. It's, uh, it's done to the best of our abilities. So uh, Gasoline Alley was basically just a place where we could put the stuff that we have found and restored, basically rescued from the boneyard, and put it here so that friends of ours and customers alike could come in and visit it and, uh, and see for themselves, you know, what this stuff looks like when it's restored. So I'm going to uh, take you around and I'm going to show you uh, some of the things that I've custom done and then I'm going to show you how uh, things that happens in history affects one's life and that followed through on some of my restorations. So uh, bear with me and I hope you okay, enjoy we'll this Okay, we'll start off with the Coke cooler. This was a cooler from the mid-50s. It was a, uh, a four-door cooler. It was a, uh, it was a refrigerated cooler, not a wet cooler. And uh, where they were so large, they weren't that desirable to, uh, to collect because they were just basically too big. So I came across a few of them and I decided, you know, there must be something I can do with it. So what I did is I basically took it and I turned it into a, a sofa, as you see here. Uh, there was a lot of extensive modifications done to it, a lot of fabricating, a lot of welding, and uh, a lot of body work. But uh, it, I think it turned out well, and people like it. I also made the matching uh, coffee table, as you can see there. And uh, what makes this unique is it has the uh, original cap catchers on the back. See if I can uh, get over there now and I'll show them to you. So there's your cap catchers. Uh, I tried to include those as well. There's a little storage area there in the back that used to catch uh, water and, and whatnot. So it's a, it's a nice unit and everybody who visits Gasoline Alley really seems to, uh, to like it. People ask me, Paul, how, uh, how long does it take to do something like this? Well, uh, something of this, uh, this magnitude would probably take about a hundred hours to do. You know, you're working by yourself and, and, and everything's got to be just right for it to work and uh, yeah it'll take a hundred hours the upholstery I didn't do I have a lady uh, in another community that does all my upholstery work and she's uh, she's pretty good at it and she she enjoys doing work for us because uh, it's always a unique item so that's just one example of what you can do with a, a full-size coke cooler I'll show you another example of that uh, of that full-size coke cooler now well here's the other example of a full-size coke cooler uh, it's basically the same uh, cooler that that sofa was built out of. And what I did here is I turned it into a dining table. I added table. the uh, aluminum footrest, as you can see there. And I added a countertop to it. And it still has its, uh, 
its lids on the back along with the cap catchers and it's all painted base coat clear coat and uh, people ask do it work yeah it sure do work it works very well actually I don't have it plugged in now because I don't I don't be out here very often but that's just an, another example of what you can do with a full-size coke cooler some more items above it that I collect uh, mostly local people had them and either bought them of them or they gave them to me um, here's the uh, what they used to call the old motorboat dispenser coke dispenser you used to mix your syrup and put it in them and that's how it was done pretty cool okay, as I told you gasoline alley started because of one small gas pump that a friend of mine in Iowa gave me and there's the pump right there right down there that little pump started gasoline alley and I'll show you what I uh, what I built to represent that so pump. there it is that's my shell oil display cabinet and it's built out of uh, two full sheets of aluminum the nozzle holder and everything else that was uh, that was hand done by me and you can see the uh, the label on it when it was built built in uh, May of 99 so it's a nice piece and after I uh, built that I started to find actual pumps some I shipped into the province and other ones I found within the province. Another cool custom item that uh, people love when they visit Gasoline Alley is this gas pump here. It has a uh, built-in TV, DVD, and yes, even a VCR. For anybody who's got any VCR movies or tapes left. And uh, it's a real nice unit. It's all pre-wired into the building, so it has surround sound. And it's a, it's a great sounding system. I'd play it normally for you, but what happens every time I play a friggin' song on YouTube, I get this copyright infringement thing, third right, third party copyright, so I'm going to leave the sound down. That way they can't ding me on it. But it's a real nice unit, and it's a, it's a 1950, I think a 56 Bowser gas pump. Nice unit. And it's a lot of fun to have in here too. We have pay phones. We have uh, our own custom press steel trucks that I designed. Here's some more of our custom trucks. Here's a 125th uh, B61 Mac that was purchased right from the Mac factory. Probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Real nice wrecker. Got a Holmes wrecker on the back of it. And Probably one of my favorite models. And of course we have the modern skill stop uh, slot machines. And people have a lot of fun with that. There's some uh, special items here. Some die cast uh, vehicles. And uh, some junk art. And some handcrafted uh, cannons that I machined, hand machined on lathe. There's uh, a couple of special items here. There's a uh, 1953 Willys Jeep that I restored. Uh, we have uh, we're proud parents of two young two young men that are in the Canadian Forces, and uh, one at the time was a medic. He's a, a biomedical engineer now, or a B Med, and I did this Jeep in his honor. And uh, everywhere he goes on tour, it gets added to the Jeep. I'm a little bit behind now. I over the winter now. I'm going to catch up with that and make sure everything's up to date on the Jeep. And uh, my other son was in the Navy. He's now in the Air Force. And uh, while he was in the Navy, I did this boat for him. And uh, you can see both these videos on YouTube of each item because I did a video on them. I used to have an extensive uh, collection of uh, pinball machines, but I had to sell them for lack of space. It was just too many. So uh, these are just some of the, the better ones or the, the most favorite ones that I kept. They're all working. 100% uh, functional and uh, work like the day they were bought. There's uh, old vintage bikes, uh, an old Honda Hunter's Cub right there. If you notice, it's got uh, double sprockets in the back for high and low range. 
no electronic shift back in the uh, back in the early 60s and of course Dale Hernard Dale is here and uh, you'll see some more custom stuff there that I did uh, NTV is a local network TV network that we have here so that's the truck that I uh, did based on that network uh, CBC here and now is a famous uh, local or provincial uh, station for CBC and here and now is a, a show that comes on every evening and there's other custom stuff here there's gas pumps here that's uh, that's quite different there's an old uh, NCR cash register and that's uh, model one very rare cash register as you can see my uh, interest change I get into weigh scales once in a while there's another weigh scale there and there's another weigh scale here and I made the pedestal to uh, to match the weigh scale there's a couple of one arm bandits from the uh, 1940s and uh, these are called Columbia's they're, they're a nice uh, nice machine and they're all working perfectly there's an old coke cooler from 1957 and there's also a custom uh, national cash register that I did in the coca-cola theme and uh, this is your waitress for the evening her name is Shelly and she's uh, she's all geared up and ready to go there's our 1965 Honda Dream 305 Dream that uh, we restored a few years back and uh, these are all tagged and licensed and uh, can be used although I've never used it I've had it running and after I restored it it works perfect but uh, it just sits here and looks pretty it was in pretty it was pretty rough shape when we got it and uh, I got it from a local guy from a friend of mine actually and uh, just restored it and uh, I restored this online as well and uh, it became very popular it was probably over a hundred and twenty thousand hits on on just this bike alone and uh, people enjoyed watching the restoration as it went along there's a C100 Cub she's a 64 and uh, nice little bike of course Discovery Channel uh, voted this bike or the C100 Cub the greatest motorcycle ever based on the numbers that sold and and are still being used today in uh, in Asian countries and I had uh, a local guy leather guy do the uh, strap for the seat and it says the greatest motorcycle ever there's a uh, a C200 right here and that's painted uh, a rival blue and uh, that's a real nice bike uh, I picked that up from a, a friend of mine Ed in Ottawa that and the Cub came together now Ed wouldn't sell me just the Cub without selling me the C200 and I had no intentions of ever doing the C200 but you know hell they've been together for so long I said well why not you know and I think Ed was pretty happy that uh, the two of them were restored and and well looked after uh, you look at uh, some of the items on it like the uh, side of the engine there it's chrome well it's not chrome it's hand buffed aluminum it's all hand polished as is the carburetor and the uh, intake the hubs are all hand, hand buffed with compound a lot of work but uh, you know it just turned out really really nice this is a 69 uh, Honda Z50 and uh, probably the first year that Honda ever came out with the headlight and the tail light and a battery and this would have represented the very first bike that I had it was actually the same color and all and uh, I bought this uh, this arrived from Vancouver Island in three small boxes it was in pretty rough shape and I restored this as well and uh, probably one of my favorite bikes you know it's uh, it brings back a lot of memories I had it for two or three years and uh, after two or three years I sold it and then I uh, I traded up to a uh, a bigger bike and the bigger bike that I traded up to would have been this uh, CT70 uh, exactly like this one it wasn't the bike but it was exactly like this bike and I'm telling you I put a lot of miles on those bikes and that particular bike is a really nice bike this one came from uh, Gatineau Quebec and uh, my son Dennis picked it up for me and shipped it he knew I really wanted this bike really bad so I took it and I restored it and of course the videos of these two bikes are also on our YouTube channel 
for anybody that's interested. Um, also have uh, some scooters. I enjoy the scooters. There's a 72 and of course there's a, an 84 on the other side of it. There's a flag that uh, my son uh, got made for me when he was in Afghanistan serving for the uh, Canadian Armed Forces and uh, he sent that to me so kind of cherish that as well. Um, in 2001, September 11, 2001, my wife and I were visiting really close friends in Sarnia, Ontario. And of course, everybody remembers that awful day. And of course, it had an effect on everybody, including myself. And when I came back, I started to think about it and I said, you know what? I got to start doing some, uh, some firefighting stuff. So here's how it started. And I started with this uh, call box. And I took that and I restored it. And uh, it's basically dedicated to the firefighters who lost their lives on September 11, 2001 at the World Trade Center. And uh, I just wanted to do something to uh, just to remember all those brave people who died trying to help others. Uh, then, of course, it started to uh, become a bit of an obsession looking for firefighting stuff. So. I found this nozzle and and restored that. Then over here I found the holy grail of collectibles when it comes to firefighters and I found this firefighting equipment. And I basically found this um, pedestal fire call box. And uh, this one is very very rare. It's from the 1920s, early 20s. And uh, you see the pedestal right there. Well right here that short narrow black piece I had to change that I had to machine that and put it here put it there instead of the long piece so it could fit actually fit in the building but I do have the original piece that goes there this thing is 11 feet tall and it's quite heavy when it's uh, complete but it's uh, it's got an art deco base on it and it's, it's just a beautiful beautiful item really really there's a section right there that I took out and it's uh, painted and it's it's ready to go back on if, if I ever decide I want to sell it or, or put it outside. But it's, it's a sin to put it outside. It's all original and uh, it's a nice Here piece. you have another fire call box from the 1950s. And uh, it's a nice unit. Uh, by the way, there's my son's hat that he wore when he was in Afghanistan. And there's a picture of him there getting a reflection from the lights. So we're pretty proud of that boy. He's done well. Uh, there's a nice train there that we uh, restored and that's from the 1920s it's a keystone and there was an actual article done on it in a magazine and we used to have a train here in Newfoundland that we uh, affectionately called the Newfie Bullet so I named it after that train and uh, there's quite a lot of articles posted or, or written on uh, on our work uh, which is, is quite humbling really and it's, it's nice to, uh, to know that people are actually interested. There's even a chess game there from Afghanistan that was handcrafted in Afghanistan. That was given to us. So that's quite unique as well. Although I have a love for Honda, I also like Harley, like everybody else. And uh, I just wanted to do some Harley items. And uh, so I took this uh, 1955 Gilbert and Barco gas pump and I turned it into a Harley pump. And uh, this is the light that used to go over the uh, gas pumps out in the gas station years ago. And what I use to uh, use for bases is I use uh, recycled brake rotors off pickup trucks. And I ear brush them and I make up a, a mount for them and I uh, put chrome lug nuts on them and it really does the job. People seem to like that as well. There's also a, uh, a meter there from the 1940s. And uh, that's custom done as well. And you can see uh, I did the same thing with the rotor. And people like that as well. Here's an old air meter from the 1930s. Nice old thing. And it actually do work. Which is even better. Here's a gas pump that I bought locally. And uh, it was a lot, a lot of work to do this one. This one was a bit rusty, but it worked out well. And there's some drive-in speakers. 
And uh, that gas pump that I was just showing you, here's a picture of it in a community just up the road from us. And you can see the gas pump there. So it's kind of unique to have a piece of history here. Here's a diner table that we, uh, we did. And uh, we put some fake food on it. So uh, some of it is still pretty fresh though. Because it still makes a noise. And people seem to like the diner. Everybody likes to get their picture taken by the diner. So anyway folks, there you have it. That's the, uh, the ins and outs of Gasoline Alley. It's kind of a fast tour, but uh, there's so much more to see, but that should give you an idea of basically what we've restored. We just basically ran out of room, so you run out of room, you got to stop. So I do hope you enjoyed having your little look, and if you have any questions or comments, you can, uh, you can post them below, and I'll try to answer them as swiftly as I can. So, uh, I'm going to leave my little buddy there to have his beer, finish his beer. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is a bonus section. This one here is, uh, this bonus is for uh, Cat 320, or 320 Cat. Because I noticed that he really enjoys collecting die-cast vehicles. And, uh... So I figured I'd take him in and show him this stuff. Here's some uh, unique stuff. Uh, there's some Franklin Mint here. There's some... Uh, <laughs> excuse me, NZG. 125th scale. I used to operate heavy equipment years ago, so still got it, I guess, embedded in my blood. So there's some, uh, some collectible stuff there that... Uh, he might be interested in seeing. Now let's have a look in the office. If anybody likes pressed steel, well, there's lots of pressed steel toys here. And uh, I'll give you an idea of what we collect in pressed steel. There's much more of this stuff, but I'll only show you this much for now. I don't want to spoil it all. So, yeah, you might say we got the collecting bug here. Okay guys, thanks for watching.